We know you can use the new Shad CN CLI to add components from a V0 URL, but it also works with any URL, which allowed me to create a CLI tool that hacks the format to inject dependencies, components, pages, CSS, or whatever you need into any application. It's not a flaw, it's a feature that can enable a whole new ecosystem around Shad CN, and I'll show you how to use it and become a contributor to that ecosystem. Let's get right into it. Okay, let's start off with V0. So I've gone into the V0 chat system and I've created this 3D view of a credit card spinning around. Now let's go take a look at the code. Now you can see that they built this spinning credit card on top of React 3 Fiber. It's really cool, it's nice to see they can do that. So now I wanna bring that into my application. Let me go and add this to my code base. But in reality, I'm just gonna make a new application out of it. So I'm gonna paste that command into my directory and now I'm gonna change add to init. Since I don't actually have an application, I'm going to initialize a new Next.js application, which init does, if it doesn't find a Next.js application in the current directory. And then it's also going to add in that code for that 3D spinning credit card because of the URL. All right, let's have it build that Next.js project. We'll call it my app. And I'm gonna take all the defaults. Now you can see right down at the bottom here where it says that it's added that spinning credit card from that URL. All right, now let's bring in the submin cursor so we can actually see it running. Now it's added to the components directory. We can see that React 3 Fiber code in there, but it hasn't added it to the page, so let's go do that. So I'm port spinning credit card and then just add it to the page. And there we go, let's give it a try. We'll just run pmpm PM dev in here and that'll bring up the server. And that brings up my spinning credit card and that's really good. So what's actually happening here? How does that CLI actually get the credit card code? Well, let's go take a look back at V0 again, and the clue is in the URL. So if I take that command line and I paste it into arc, and then I can just remove the command, I looked at the CLI code, and what it's actually doing is adding slash JSON to this, so let's take a look. So here's that JSON from V0. You can see that it has those extra dependencies. You can also add registry dependencies. Those are ShadCN components, so you can put in a list of button, select, whatever you need from Shad CN in there. And then it's got a list of files. And the important parts there are the path to the file and then the content of the file. So can I make my own version of this JSON file and then point the CLI at it? Well, let's give it a try. So in the code that comes with this video and a link in the description right down below, there are a couple of JSON files ready to go. One is simple.json. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create another tab here and I'm gonna run mpx servor in that directory. Now, MPX server war is just a simple static server. So let's go take a look. So now I've got a list of all the files in here, including the my app that we just created, but I also got simple.json. And simple.json is exactly the same JSON format, but in this case, I'm going to put in a page, and that page is going to say hello. So let's give this a try. So I'll go back to my original terminal. I'm going to remove my app. And I'm gonna use that init trick again to build a new app, but this time I'm going to use the URL from Arc. Let's paste that in there and we'll give it a go. Again, I'll call it my app and take all the defaults. All right, we can see that it updated app page. Let's check it out. We'll go to 3000 and it says, hello, Jack. Everything is set up. Awesome. So yes, we can create one of these files and we can host it wherever we want. So if you want to put it on GitHub, no problem. You can just check it into GitHub and folks can use that GitHub URL in their MPX Shad CN in it. It is super cool. But now that's all fine and well for adding components to an application. But what about something that requires more setup? Like authenticating with a service provider. Can it handle that? Well, let's try that out with this week's video sponsor, WorkOS. WorkOS is an enterprise grade authentication solution, but don't let enterprise put you off. WorkOS authentication is super easy to set up and we'll do just that as we create a template application that we can use to generate this ShadCN JSON. Let's give it a try and see both just how easy it is to work with WorkOS to install it and use it and how easy it is to create a ShadCN JSON file. So the first step is going over to WorkOS and take a look at their awesome dashboard. I'm gonna sign in. And the two relevant pieces of information you need here are the WorkOS client ID and the WorkOS API key. There's a whole walkthrough of how to get this set up for Next.js, but it is super simple. 
I've gone and enabled both email and password setup as well as social logins. So let's go take a look and see how easy it is to add this into an XJS app and turn that into a ShadCN JSON file. Now again, I'm going to start with that init command. I'm not going to give it a URL this time, but I am going to specify that I want all the code in a source directory. That's just for me. I prefer having a source directory. I'm going to give it an actual name this time. I'm going to call it an XJS template, but I am going to take all the defaults. And I'll bring that up in cursor. Now I'll go into the terminal, and I know I'm going to need a login button. So right now I'm just going to bring in ShadCN's button. So again, I'm going to use that ShadCN CLI to add the button to my project. So here's where it gets a little bit interesting. The ShadCN differ tool that I created uses Git to compare the current version of the code versus a baseline of the code. And that's how it gets the delta to know what it's supposed to put in that JSON file. So I need to create a baseline right now. To do that, I'm going to remove the current Git. And then I'm going to initialize a new Git repository. I'm going to add everything to that in its current form. And then I'm going to create the baseline commit. So anything that I had on top of this is going to go into that JSON file. Now to get started with WorkOS or any authentication provider, you need some environment variables. So I'm going to create an example environment file to show people what environment variables they need to set. So this environment file has all of the environment variables you're going to need, including the redirect URI. That's where we're telling WorkOS to send the user after a successful authentication. A cookie password, that's just an anonymized string. It's giving you some details on how to actually create that. And then those WorkOS client ID and WorkOS API key that I talked about when I looked at the dashboard. Now, I've already got that set up in my environment, so I'm going to go copy in my development local so that I can get going. Now, in your case, you would copy that environment example and fill in those values. I'm going to go into my terminal now and add the Next.js adapter for WorkOS. That adapter is called AuthKit, so we're going to add WorkOS AuthKit Next.js. Now, integrating AuthKit into your Next.js app requires three basic steps. The first one is to add middleware. That's pretty easy. You create a middleware file inside of your source directory, and then you add in the middleware. All we're going to do is bring in AuthKit middleware from that adapter. We're then going to export that. And the only real configuration that you need to do is to set what routes you want to be protected. I just added in a placeholder route there for protected route, but you can put in whatever you want. And the next thing you need to do is implement on that callback. So we know that callback is on slash callback. So we need to create a callback API. So to do that, we create a new directory, callback, and then inside of that route.ts. And again, this couldn't be simpler. We're just going to bring in handle auth and then export that as get. It really doesn't get much easier than that. Now, the third step is to integrate this into your UI. So the first thing I want to do is create a button that allows me to sign in. So I'm going to go over to that components directory that was created, and I'm going to create a new file in there called sign in button. Into that file, I'm going to bring in some handy utility functions, get sign in URL, which gives us the sign in URL, get the user, which gives us the current user, and then the sign out function that allows us to sign out. I'm also going to bring in button from ShadCN. That's what we're going to use for our UI. This is an RSC, so it gets to be an async function, and we can use that async behavior to await get user. That gives us back the user. We can also await the authorization URL so we know where to send the user when they want to log in. Then in terms of the HTML, we're just going to look at user, and we're going to say if we have a user, then we're going to give them a sign out button, which is just a form that calls a server action that says sign out. And otherwise, we're going to give them a button that has an anchor tag in it that goes to that authorization URL. Pretty simple. Last thing we need to do is actually use this. So let's go over to our page.tsx file. We'll import that sign-in button that we just created. Again, we'll get the user. We'll say hello to the user if they're there. If they haven't, we'll tell them that they should log in. And then we give them the sign-in button. Let's hit save and see how it goes. All right, we're back on port 3000 again. We should log in. Yes, we should. Hit sign-in. We get our WorkOS powered login form, including the email password that I've configured, as well as social logins. I'm just going to use Google to log in. And there we go. How easy is that to add authentication to your application? Well, let's see. Let's use that ShadCN differ tool to actually create a JSON template that does this automatically. So folks can do it without actually adding any code outside of the environment variables to their application. Let's go back into cursor. And now I'm going to run my ShadCN differ tool in the directory of the template. To do that, I just run ShadCN differ at the latest version. And that gives me the JSON output. But it's kind of a mess, so I'm just going to go and forward that into the parent directory, and I'll call this next.js workOS auth.json. Now we can take a look over it in the browser. Now we can see that that JSON file is there. We click on it, and we can see what it's actually going to do. So the tool is detected that we bring in auth.get next.js, that we also have a dependency on button. 
They've created an env example file. Notice that it's not included the .env.development.local file. That's because it actually looks at the get ignore and ignores anything in that get ignore. And then it's added the elements that we need. It has that callback route. It's got the middleware. And then it's got the UI. I think this is going to work. Let's give it a try. Let's go back into Kitty. I'm going to get rid of my app again. And I'm going to use that init command to use the JSON that we just created. Again, I'll call it my app and take all the defaults. Now check out that all the stuff that is added, it's added that environment example file, it's added the callback route and the sign in button and all that good stuff. I think we're good. So again, I'm going to copy the environment development local from my template. That'll give me my particular environment variables. Now I'll launch it. I'm going to hit refresh. And there we go, an exact duplicate of what we had before. But maybe you're like, yeah, but you're just showing the same thing again. Well, let's go make a change to my app and see it show up. So I'll go over into my app directory. I'll go into the page. I'll create a nice little H1 tag. And again, I'll launch it from in here. So there you go. You can see that this is my application. We have authentication working right out of the box after you've added those environment variables. How cool is that? But it's actually even cooler because it doesn't just work with Next.js. It actually works with a whole bunch of different environments, including Vite. So let's try it with Vite. Now, I've already created a WorkOS JSON file for Vite. So let's just give it a try. And I'll show you how easy it is to use WorkOS in the Vite context. So back over here on my localhost 8080, I can see that I have a Vite auth WorkOS JSON file. Let's go back into my kitty. Now, because init wants to create an XJS application, I need to have a Vite with ShadCN setup ready to go to add in this Vite auth WorkOS JSON. And I already have that with Vite with ShadCN. So I'm going to again remove my app. And this time I'm going to use this Vite with ShadCN as a starting point. So I'll copy that into my app, bring that up in cursor. I'll install all my dependencies and run it in dev mode. This one, of course, is up on 5173. Let's go take a look. And it just says, hello from Vite. So now let's apply WorkOS to this Vite starter. I'm going to go back over here, grab my URL for the Vite setup, copy it. And then inside of my cursor, I'm going to do, again, Shad Sienna latest. But this time, I'm going to add that URL. So now notice between add and init, we're getting a different behavior. With add, it's prompting us if we want to overwrite files. With init, it doesn't prompt if you want to overwrite files because it assumes that you're creating a new application. Therefore, you just want to do the overwrite. So of course, we need to say yes to all this. And now I want to install because I have a new dependency on WorkOS. And then I want to do dev. Let's go over to our beat. <sighs> Whoa. All right, cool. All right, we can't sign in, but that's because we don't have the environment variables set up. So let me go and get some good environment variables. All right, now I've added my own environment variables for the client ID. Let's give it one more try. And now we can sign in. And there we go. We're signed in. Let's go check out how easy it is in the code. So over in main, I've added an authkit provider and then wrap my application in that authkit provider. Over in components, again, I've created a sign in button very similar to the one that we had in Next.js. This is, of course, not an RSE because we're not in Next.js, so we're just going to use use auth, and that gives us back everything that you need to know. And then we bring in that sign component to our app, and so we just use it in the right spot. That's how easy it is to use WorkOS in the context of a Vite spa like this. So now just think of the possibilities here. Whether you're a service provider like WorkOS or a library author, you can create one of these JSON files. Check it into your GitHub and then put it into your docs here. Use this ShadCN command to create a new app or integrate the code into an existing app, and boom, you're all set up without the customer having to write any code. How cool is that? What this does is it creates an ecosystem around ShadCN and Tailwind. You're making a graphing component? Cool. You can create a JSON file with ShadCN Differ, and now the user can install and configure the library with some example components and whatever you need. And you just give folks a simple, single command line. Here, run this ShadCN command with my URL, and it's installed and you're good to go, it's amazing stuff. Now this ShadCN Differ tool that I created is open source and I'm looking for folks to help me with that. So if that's interesting to you, then be sure to go and check out the code link in the description right down below. If you have any questions or comments, be sure to put those in the comment section right down below. I'd love to hear about that. If you're interested in advanced topics like this, go check out my Next.js course, pronextjs.dev. And in the meantime, if you like this video, hit that like button. If you really like the video, hit the subscribe button and click on that bell and be notified the next time a new 
blue collar coder comes out.